From Chicago's Can TV, a look at the week's events is reported in the newspapers, in the blogs and online, and on radio and TV. This is Chicago Newsroom. Well, hi again. Welcome to the show. And you would be hard-pressed to come up with a better example of applying multiple layers of lipstick to a member of the porcine American community than Mayor Emanuel's press statement this week about the parking meters. Great news, free parking on Sunday. Bad news, meters till midnight in many of the places people want to be late at night. It'll save a billion dollars, but that's over 71 years, so we'll celebrate that at that big savings festive gala that they're planning in 2084. Make sure you buy your ticket now. And the group Raise Your Hand says it's found 40 of those so-called school actions CPS is about to vote on are just kind of crazy, and they haven't looked at all of them yet either, by the way. But the main focus of the daily show is going to be Cook County Jail. It's getting so full, some people are saying we're going to have to build another wing to house all those people who, for the most part, are being held there pending a trial, people who may not even be guilty. So why not release hundreds of these supposedly eligible people on electronic monitoring or lower bail so people can wait for the trial at home? Well, as with all such things, it is complicated, and we'll try to understand some of those complications on today's show as we welcome to the panel Eric Zorn, our old friend, Chicago Tribune columnist. Glad to have you, Eric. And also John, uh, John Mackey, who is the executive director of the John Howard Association, which monitors these things. And uh, we should have, a, I think, an interesting conversation about all of that today. But we really do have to start just at the top with a couple of things that are going on right now. Uh, am I unfair to his honor by saying that uh, this, this big press announcement that he had to which he didn't accept any questions uh, really was not that big a deal? Uh, no, you're not being unfair to his honor. On the other hand, the previous mayor was not fair to <laughs> the current mayor, and I mean, it is essentially, he is pretty handcuffed. Here. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, you know, I, I am not going to celebrate this new deal. I think it, it's, it, it sounds to me like a wash. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you would think that the the, the, the parking meter company would give in, and I mean, <laughs> why anyone thinks that they're oh, they've been rolled? Mayor Emanuel has rolled them on this deal. Right, well, obviously right. not. I mean, this right. is like you know, you're getting free parking on Sundays, which I don't understand why that's a big deal right, to the mayor. Right. Why, why this swap is such a, such a thing? Um, I mean, it, it just seems like a bunch of little announcements. I think the mayor used the term that this deal was a lemon, mm -hmm. and, and it's still a lemon. Yeah. It's just a, a slightly more rotten lemon. He squeezed a little lemonade out of the lemon, but as far as I can tell, it was a few drops. I don't know uh, how many, uh, you know, I mean, if that, right? I mean, yeah. we, we don't yeah. even know. I mean, the people who, who are more expert at this than I am say that it's, it's you know, it's nothing. It's just and incremental, you know, if anything. W without getting too picky about this stuff, I mean, the parking meter zones on Sundays, at least certainly where I live, and I get around the city quite a bit, are generally not really even used on Sundays anyway. So I don't think that there's a huge amount of uh, celebration that's going to be going on there. Uh, the uh, uh, expired meter blog had a really interesting thing today that I guess they're trying in some cities, which is a kind of a, um, uh, a sort of a prorated, par like a d an on-demand parking uh, fee. So that, I mean, for example, I, I take the train in from uh, Jefferson Park every day, and around Jefferson Park there are probably 30 parking spaces that are never, ever, ever, ever used because they have parking meters that are two hours so nobody can use them. If there was some kind of demand structure so that the price rose or fell depending, depending on how much people want those parking spaces, probably everybody would be happier, but we have this one-size-fits-all. Uh, you know, but during, like, so during weekdays, it would be yeah. a certain amount of easier. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it makes it, and it seems like they, they have not, I guess they've resisted the idea of, of moving these, uh, taking certain zones like Wrigleyville and raising the rates there mm -hmm. and then lowering them in certain areas right, like in the right. West Loop and so right. on. So, yeah, I mean, I, I still, I, I, I'd like to see their numbers on this. Yeah, well, but, yeah, but, yeah. but I, I, I still can't, I mean, I read the profile and they should be did a big, long interview with Mayor Daly on Sunday, and I just I can't read about that guy without just getting furious about, <laughs> about what he left us yeah, with yeah, and how yeah. he took that one point one five billion dollars and spent it all, yeah, yeah. and then got out of town, and now he right. he, he, he swans about town expecting high fives from people. <laughs> I just it, it just it's outrageous, and Mayor Emanuel won't even mention his name. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, it's it's almost it, it, at this point, as outrageous as the deal was, I'm less angry about the deal as I am with the fact that they had managed to spend it all in a couple of years. Yeah. I mean, that, that was, well, anyway, all right, it's enough. I, can we just talk for just briefly for a moment? I know neither of you are schools experts, but uh, you're citizens of Chicago. You've seen all this before. 
I just, I, I, it seems to me that we have seen an exercise in the muting of democracy in a way that even for Chicago is a little bit unusual. I mean, these, these show hearings that have been going on with people who are hired to just kind of sit there and take notes and say, oh, well, I'll, I'll make sure this gets passed on to Barbara Bird Bennett. Just, I'm sure she'll read every one of your comments. It's, it's outrageous. And, and the thing is, not my outrage is not at the process itself, but at the the real just goofiness of doing this and the way that it, it just engenders in people this level of just resentment about the whole process. Am I being well, unfair? You know, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I saw a different part of this. Uh, um, we've been fighting against the, the mayor's proposal to create mandatory minimums for certain gun offenses in Springfield. Mm -hmm. And he came in there with his people and was like, this is, what, this is how it's going to be. Um, I don't care what you think. I don't care what you think. This is what I want. You know, first it kind of worked, and then it fell apart. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, this. I think the system got his style. You know, I think to be a politician, you know, to be an effective politician, you not only to have you need to have a, a, a clear vision, mm -hmm. you need to know how to work with stakeholders to massage people's egos. Yeah. yeah. And on that side of the thing, I mean, Emmanuel's has a lot to learn. <laughs> a lot to learn. <laughs> it's a, it, I'm sorry. No, I, I, I didn't even say it. It, this process is. I mean, there are 53 schools that have been closed, and the, the raise your hand folks you said have identified what 40 of them. Well, there are the 40 actions because these actions are all complicated. In some That's cases, it's it's yeah. moving people. Well, the, what they're looking at, and I think a lot of other groups too, is they're looking at the receiving schools, these so-called welcoming schools, and the kind of impact that it's going to have on these schools, a school that may be doing okay, just kind of barely making it, and suddenly they're going to take on 300 new kids. What, what's and schools that up? aren't doing as well right. in right. these cases. Right, right. So. I just, I mean, wh what was the rush here? You know, I mean, I seem, I, it seems like there's some general agreement that maybe something like this might be important or necessary at mm -hmm. some point mm -hmm. in the future. But why? Why in one year? Why? Yeah. I mean, why can't yeah. this be a longer pop? You know, especially since the savings aren't huge. Right. Uh, right. Front savings are not huge. I mean, they talk when they talk about the savings they're anticipating. They're talking about a long time window. Right. Well, well and they're also borrowing 150 million dollars in order to pull it off right. because they don't have the money to put the science labs and right. iPads into the welcoming schools. But, you know, in, in their defense, I, I would say that there is not one school community in the city that's going to say, "Oh, close us." Sure. Oh, of course. High that's time that's you absolutely us, but, you know? right. So more reason for a, a better process right everyone needs to have a you know a chance to speak and, there, and you know there's going to be bad feelings at the end of it but right. there needs to be a better process yeah, absolutely I don't I don't think I've talked to one living human being who doesn't agree that we don't need to just leave everything as it is there's definitely need for change there's need for closings there's need for uh, you know the mixing of different facilities when you have an old rancid school and you've got a good school nearby and all that kind of thing it's really a, it's really a question about the, the process and how the process was done um, I, I guess we really should stop talking about other things and get down to the, the reason that we've asked you to be here today. Um, the issue that is on the table today is the issue of overcrowding at Cook County Jail. It is now apparently 99.7% full or something like that, John. I'm sure you know the exact numbers. And the question arises, why is this? Why is it suddenly it, it, the population was high, it had been lowered for a while, now all of a sudden it's spiking. And uh, there was an extraordinary uh, debate, I guess you'd call it, on Channel 11 on Chicago Tonight about a month ago with Tony Preckwinkle, Tom Dart, and of course the Chief Judge Tim Evans, the three of them sitting there with Phil Ponce. And they just I mean, Eric, you wrote about it. They just started tearing each other's hair out. It was an amazing well, piece of... Well, in particular, Dart and, and, and uh, Evans were going at each other. And yeah, Preckwinkle yeah. in the middle was sort of right. trying to play the honest broker and, and, uh, and agree with both of them and disagree with both of them simultaneously. Right, right. She was okay, really trying to play down the middle stuff, a, a right, little yeah, bit, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it, was, it was phenomenal. And I have posted a transcript on my blog of the entire thing. Which is uh, a very helpful thing uh, to read, by uh, the way. But almost yeah. seeing it's better. I mean, yeah. seeing yeah. the yeah. anger, yeah. seeing yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the personal right. Right. animosity in some well, cases. Well, I, I watched that, I guess, probably three times. And I've read the transcript a couple of times. And it was not until the re most recent time that I read the transcript that I started underlying words where I, underlining words where I realized that these guys are talking right past each other about very specific things where one of them would be talking about an order and the other one would be, anyway, we'll, we'll get into all of that. But needless to say, there is a great deal of disagreement about how to bring the population down or whether to just 
give up and well, build another jail. Before we do that, can, can you sure. just walk us through, I mean, this has been going on since mm -hmm. 1974, yes. right? I mean, essentially, yeah. mm -hmm. it's in court. Just walk us through right now exactly how we got to where we are now, because the jail has been more crowded than it is right yes. now right. Uh, at right. times. So, so how do we get well, to this it, point? Just, you know, it's a long and complicated history. I, mean, I, I would first say this is not a problem that's unique to Cook County. I mean, this, this is a problem of mass incarceration. The, the fact that the United States incarcerates more people than any other country in the world. So, you know, jails and prisons across the country are dealing with this exact same problem. Mm -hmm. Now, I think the politics here has intensified and actually overwhelmed kind of the, the policy aspects of this problem. Politics in Cook County? Isn't that strange? Yeah, no, I, you know, again, most of my oh. work from the state level, and I've been wading into Cook County, and I thought the politics in Illinois state was bad. <laughs> um, but no, so, you know, we've, we've for a long time used prison as a, not only a primary response to crime, but a lot of our social problems, whether it's drug addiction, Drugs. mental illness, that is that is that prostitution exactly. That has gotten worse and worse. And I think what you're seeing is people um, who might have you know entered the jail with a you know a, a small conviction or a, a small charge, and that gets worse and worse and worse. And so you see people with rap sheets, you know, 15, 20, mm -hmm. 20 arrests sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's you know it's it's the closing of mental health facilities. The fact that it's hard to get, if not impossible, to get drug treatment in the communities. It's the fact that we use jails and prisons as our primary response to problems we otherwise don't want to deal Tom with. Tom Dart says in this very interview that, that he's running the largest mental health facility he, in the United he States. He is, of and, it, and it's and it's it's perverse. And I, um, you know, I think Tom Dart's become a real spokesman against that kind of thing. But again, and this is not this is not a Cook County problem. This is a this is a, a United States problem. Yeah. And again, and that's what I think the what I thought about Chicago tonight was that. We need to get outside of the politics here because this is a, you know, this this is a national problem. There are national solutions to these problems. None of them are are are, are going to be perfect. But until we actually get ourselves out of this playground fight, mm -hmm. we're going to stay within it. Well, mm -hmm. I'll give I'll give President Preckwinkle some credit for giving voice to some of the things you're Absolutely. talking about right there. I mean, I'm not sure policy wise what she's been able to affect, right, but she's right. talked about this very thing you're talking about, which is we've got too many of the wrong people locked right, up, right. and and that and that's the problem. And, and and you know this this figure about how crowded the jail is the jail is what 10,100 yeah, capacity yeah. and it and it's right around it, it's like you know a couple hundred under mm -hmm. but it changes every day right, actually. Right, right. but it's it's really close and we're still just in you know it's we're just starting the month of May and it's gonna get it's, it's gonna, gonna spike more, mm -hmm. it's gonna spike over the summer right I mean just just in Chicago on on uh, what Tuesday night we had uh, 11 shootings I think it was I mean it's that, that facility is going to get kind of crowded. And we with keep hearing people. we keep hearing from our police superintendent and our mayor that we've got to put more people in prison for mandatory, as you just mentioned, for mandatory possession of illegal firearms and that kind yes. of thing. That the solution is locking more people up. I mean, that's that's overly simplified. But but, but no, when you're not, when you're running really. the jail, that's what uh, you're no. And I think about. you know I guess one important piece to the jail, and I think the order and the fact that the jail's been under a consent decree for so long complicates some of the the facts about prisons and jails. But for the most part, you know, the, the, the jail is a receiving place. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have much control over who, who, who comes to the jail. They, they, right. they take who they get, and their job is really to react, whether they have the resources or the, or the training, you know, to actually do so. And so, you know, this is where, you know, John Howard, where the state's only nonpartisan prison watchdogs, were, were critics of prisons and jails. There's a part of our work that we're always, in some sense, sympathetic with the impossible job these places you become have to do. And, well, yeah, in a certain yeah. way. I mean, what do you do when you have a population of 2,000 people who are mentally ill, for example? Mm -hmm, Jail mm -hmm. is not a place for that, and yet right. that's where they are. And I guess it's important at this point just to point out for viewers who, like many of us, might not understand that there's a big difference between a prison and a jail. Huge difference, and it's all you know. These, these are you know synonymous in our culture, and that you can, we, can, we confuse them, but they're two radically different places. Um, prison it, jail is basically a processing place, right? It's a place where you go if you're charged with a crime. You can serve up to a year there for some kind of, you know, um, a, a conviction. But mostly, it's a processing place. It's it's a hotel. A <laughs> prison's where you actually go to serve longer sentences. That's that's more of a house. Um, but both these places, I think this is a really important point that's probably lost in the public sometimes. I've never met a correction administrator who wants to have a crowded jail or prison. The 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 secret about corrections is. If they can get folks out of their facilities, they will do that, as long as they can do it without great political risk or a risk to public safety. And there's the nexus of what well, it so is we, we're talking. And we got to, I mean, the lay of the land right now is that you know the the, the, the federal courts have, have, have want they're trying to bring the, the numbers down because they feel like this is a what, the an Eighth Amendment violation yes. to have these people in in um, uh, you know these crowded conditions. And so they have given the sheriff the ability 
to release up to 1,500 prisoners on his own say so. I mean, with some at with any given some, time, with some conditions at, at you know at any given time, he can, he can release up to 1,500 of them. Which I feel, and I think you know, I, I can't speak for Sheriff Dart, but I think that's an extraordinary uh, uh, shoving off onto the sheriff something that is a judicial responsibility. He, he's, not, he's not a judge. And, well, and then listening to Evans and, and and the response that I got from Evans, which was wholly inadequate, and I posted that too. Evans basically says, "This is not my problem. Overcrowding is not my problem. My problem is to look at an these administrative, pieces. not a judicial. This is this is not a judicial thing. I have to set the me and my judges have to set the bail that we think is appropriate. We're not going to worry about the overcrowding situation. But unfortunately, when you take that situation, I mean, that's the judgment that a judge." Mm -hmm. renders they are mm -hmm. qualified to do that and you mm -hmm. say you ask the sheriff mm -hmm. and the sheriff is not going to sit there on his own right. he's got right. other stuff to right. do he's going to have some sort of under sheriff some deputy going through these files and that's a judicial function that you're you're fobbing off on the executive branch i think that that, that is part okay, of it okay we're, we're we're getting into this thing now because yeah. let's try to let's try to put these things in into the, the, the appropriate buckets a federal panel told the sheriff that he is authorized to let 1,500 people at a time, or at any given time, mm -hmm. out onto the street uh, with electronic monitoring. But the question then becomes, how does he make that judgment? He's right. not a judge. He didn't put them in jail in the first place. There used to be, uh, 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 according to everything we've read, it used to be that judges would would what issue a court order saying you can go on electronic monitoring but then all of a sudden like at, at just like a light switch it got turned off and they stopped doing that and the judges all from one day to the next started issuing recommendations and there's no such thing as a judicial recommendation I mean that's that's I mean a judge is not an advice columnist right? yeah, a judge yeah. issues orders the judge doesn't mm -hmm. say um, you know I recommend that we be quiet in the court no he right. says order in the court <laughs> or and else, I mean, right. I'm serious I mean and it, right, it's, yeah. it's preposterous it's almost a contradiction in terms mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you're right it was, was mid-november of last year right. they had, they were issuing like about 25 orders a day for electronic mm -hmm. monitoring and it dropped to uh, it, ever since that mid-november there's been only about 33 of them total yeah. from from then until now so that so that you've got this extraordinary and precipitous drop off that judge evans uh does not refuses to explain so how did this happen he says, and he told me uh that um it would be uh illegal he says the law does not permit a chief judge to enter orders telling other judges how to rule mm -hmm. in matters before them. Well, mm -hmm. then how did it happen? Yeah, I pressed right, him on that right, twice. Right. He's just given me no comment. Return. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. It's when, phenomenal. when he was on the Channel 11 uh, program, Evans said, and we find that almost 50% of the time when we either order or recommend it, the sheriff does not release a person on electronic monitoring. To which Dart says, 88% of the people they ordered us to put on electronic monitoring, we did put them on. But it's when you read the transcript, you understand that Evans is saying 50% of the time when we either order or recommend it. So God only knows how many people that is. And mm -hmm. Dart responds by saying 88% of the people they ordered us to put on, we did. Ultimately, they did. Ultimately. According to Dart. Yeah. Right. So they're, they're, we're talking apples and apple salad here. I mean, they're, they're not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's just a backup. I mean, the order, that 1500 number is, is probably, it's, when you get to the weeds of it, it's a lot, it, it's, it, it's going to be smaller than it appears. Mm -hmm. um, so there were these two kind of, uh, there were a handful of disqualifying kind of factors. If you're arrested for a violent offense, which is about 30% of the population, mm -hmm. if you have a violent conviction or, or violent crime, there's some debate about what that means. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then it also, I mean, this order is, doesn't tell Dart, you will do this. It, it empowers him. It gives him discretion. Right. It's and another then, one of these almost recommendations. Well, and it, and so yeah, it, it's, it's saying, to, to, as Eric said, Dart, you will be a judge, which right. I think this is part right. of the problem with right. our system is we're, we're not um, kind of relegating roles to their proper places. But but then there's, you know, uh, Dart's been given two uh, retired judges to help him with these cases. Yeah. And these judges go through these cases, and my understanding it takes anywhere from a day to two days to do so. Um, and they look at all kinds of factors, uh, criminal history, mm -hmm. employment, mm -hmm. housing. Um, they're, they're, they're connected to the, to the community. Well, housing these is really important, too. It's you, you yeah. can't essential. Answer, you can't yes. have on home monitoring within a home. And right. so and Dart says he runs into that all the time. Absolutely. So I think, you know, that 1,500 number, when you actually work through and again, I think I, you know, John Howard Association, where I work, what I do, we want to see a smaller prison and, mm -hmm. and jail system. Mm -hmm. I, so I, I have tremendous respect for, for President Pre for Cook County Board President Preckwinkle and her, and her kind of moral clarity on this issue. But when it gets to something like electronic monitoring, you have to do this carefully. Mm -hmm. And in my, my review of what Dart's been doing, I think he's doing the right thing. 
And I think we have to look back to, to the courts and say, you know, why why are you not making the decisions that you're actually empowered to right, make? Right. Um, you know, when someone comes, you know, uh, has been arrested and is at, is at a bond hearing, that's where that decision to, you know, should take place. You have the record in front of you, you have the lawyer in front of you, you can ask questions, you can right. look them in the eye, make the hard call. Once the person's then kicked back to the jail and it's kind of done after the fact, you got people shuffling. You think you've got some uh, you know, some employee, yeah. sheriff department employee shuffling papers, looking at this. And you got to, you know, I mean, you realize that with with, with the sheriff, you know, I mean, Sheriff Dart uh, has political aspirations. Everybody says, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what if what if he says, oh well, you know, okay, we'll let we'll let this guy off on home monitoring, and mm -hmm. the guy doesn't have a home to go right. to, and he goes out and he kills somebody. Right, well, right, people say, right. Sheriff Dart, how come you did that? Right. You know, well, I mean, so that's that's the thing. I, yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so this I think you know, <laughs> this this is where process matters. This kind of goes maybe the resonates with uh, the ROM and, and the and the and the school closing. Process matters in justice reform, as much or maybe even more than in the ends, right? And if mm -hmm. you don't have a process, you because mm -hmm. because ultimately this system is not perfect. Bad things will happen. It's 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 inevitable. It's part of and it's 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 the horrible fact of living in a society that crimes will occur, even though we can put the best efforts forward mm -hmm. to to prevent them. But so. When you have a process where we're letting people go who are otherwise, you know, would be in confinement, if something bad happens, you need to be able to defend this process as the most rigorous process right, that we right, had in place. Right. And not a recommendation. Not a recommendation, not a quick look at the files. There needs yeah. to be, look, we did yeah. everything we could. Yeah. Mistakes, I mean, things, bad things will happen, but this process is sound. Well, no. you, you said, you know, Sheriff Dart was given these two judges. He actually hired them out right. of his own budget. That's true. Yeah. And he's yeah. also, yeah. Uh, according to him, I haven't. I have to double check this, but he says that he has he has actually used it for money from his own budget to put some of these he's actually prisoners rented rooms and into stuff. like uh, yeah. shelters so yeah, that they can yeah, have like, yeah. so so I feel like he's making a good faith effort. But here's the, here's the question though, the the people who are who we're talking about here, uh, Preckwinkle says you know ninety percent of them are there just because they can't make bond right. I mean so so you have this you have this discrimination issue where. A, a person from a wealthy community with a with a lousy background who does something really awful can pay the bond and he's out, right? A person who is exactly the same but comes from a very poor family that can't raise that kind of money sits and rots at the, at the jail. So Preckwinkle is right that there's a, that there's, right. A, there's, a, there's, a, there's a discrimination of some sort here. But the fact of the matter is that, uh, well, I shouldn't say the fact of the matter, what, what Dart says is that even with this 1500 latitude that he's given, he can't release people who have a rap sheet, who have a violent background. And he says that that, that severely limits the number because I, I can't remember the exact number, but 80 percent 80 percent 80 percent of the folks there have more than four violent uh, offenses on their background. The, the, yeah, the averages, he did a, he did a, a one-day snapshot study of the jail population, yeah. and the average number of arrests is, I mean, it's like, yeah, it's I, I don't want to misquote, yeah, but it's yeah, very it's high. A lot, it's high. not like right, this is right. your first time in the jail. And, or your first and time. Sheriff Zorn would probably <laughs> not want to release any one of these guys on electronic monitoring on his own on, well, watch. Certainly on, on his own say-so, and, right, and that's really right. the problem. And, and I, you know, I really feel like one of the problems in this thing is that is that we have this this you know, impenetrable judiciary. Judge Evans won't respond to my questions. He uh, won't send any. You, know, you asked him to have somebody. I, I on should this say show. that we uh, right. We, we did. We we had several conversations with his office. They were very nice, and they, they sent along to us a copy of what they sent to you. In fact, no comments. Uh, no further comments. Uh, and and <laughs> and, uh, and and it was pointed out to me that I, you know it's a very short time to get uh, a very important busy guy to come and be on our little show. And uh, that unfortunately, he's the only one who speaks for the courts, and so therefore, we, you, there couldn't be anyone else. You know, I accept that for what it is. To, but he's got time to write a, a, a five, six paragraph email to me that says nothing. Right. He's got, I think he would have a chance at least to write another couple of paragraphs that yeah. says so, something. <laughs> so, can I break in? I, mean, I think this is what we need in Cook County. Again, to kind of go back, this is, this is not, we're seeing this as a local problem. This is really not a local problem. It's, this is a national yeah, problem, and, yeah. there are, and, there, and there are national approaches to this problem. I think here the politics have so overwhelmed the situation that. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I think yesterday Chicago Tonight showed us, you know, these folks, and I, I have, again, I have tremendous respect for President Preckwinkle, I have tremendous respect for DART, but we need an independent broker to come in. Yeah. And there, yeah, are, and there yeah. are groups like this. We need to bring in a group like a National Institute of Corrections, the mm -hmm. law enforcement group that solves these kind of problems, a place like the Beer Institute, which is a, which is a policy um, kind of a practitioner and group. And they would take the heat? They can, yeah, well, they would come in as an independent, no, we have no relationship with these folks. Here's an analysis of the system. Here's a roadmap out of the, you know the fact that you've been violating the Constitution for 40 years. Mm -hmm. Here's what needs to be done, and then people like Eric and myself can hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. I think as long as this remains a fight between these parties, this is what it's going to well, be. I mean, it, it really was uh, whatever the opposite of profiles in courage was. Uh, uh, <laughs> 
profiles in, in running for the corners because you could see that all of these are political people, as Eric has said, with political aspirations of some sort well, or another. Probably not Judge Evans. But, yeah. but, but still, uh, he represents judges who, mm -hmm. who have to face, uh, okay, it's the retention, terror the terror of, of retention. But still, the point is that none of these people want to be the one who gets that newspaper headline saying so and so, who was on electronic monitoring, went out and raped three people and killed two people, and this judge allowed it. So what they're doing is they're fobbing it off on the sheriff, and the sheriff is saying, screw you, it's I'm not, not doing right. this. It's not my job. It it's not my job. job. It isn't his job. It isn't right. his job. It's not his job. Right. Right. His job. Right. And I, I think, I mean, you know, I, I think John's right. It would be nice to bring in an outside force, but, but it ought to be, it is the responsibility of the judiciary and the sheriff's department to work together to mm -hmm. figure this out and to realize right. that you need right. to lock up dangerous people. We all agree with that, mm -hmm. but we also need to make sure that people we're not holding people in there right. for for right. minor offenses, right. for nonviolent offenses, for for you know people who so are you, probably going to I mean, be acquitted here, or dismissed. Here's Sorry. the questions we're not. I mean, this is again the the fact that you know these officers are getting kind of bogged down on on the semantics of this federal order. We're not asking larger questions like you know how many people should be in our jail? Right. Who right, should right. be there? You know, how should, you know, what kind of goal should we have to get us where we need to be? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're not even having that discussion, and that, it's hard to imagine having it. Right. Given in the, a political environment. Yes. But, the, but the judiciary has to take the lead. They because have to. Ultimately, right. it's right. their decision. Whether you bring in an outside panel, whether you bring right. in a federal right. court, whether you bring right. in, the, the judges have to be the ones who are really going to take responsibility for who is in jail and who isn't. But so then and they have to take, and they have to, it has to be realistic. You can't just lock up everybody you think might right. do something right. wrong. You have mm -hmm. to, because you have a limited number amount of space, because otherwise we're going to be forced to what, build another jail? Right. right. And, and who's right. going to pay for that? So so a judge needs to say, okay, I've heard all this, your, your, you know, your pretrial arraignment, whatever it is and and I am going to allow you to be released on electronic monitoring end of uh, stamp the paper send it off and then that person is sent well, out and I think too I mean Eric just came out in your column and also in the trial tonight the judges need to care about the conditions of the jail right, you know, in a right, kind of technical right, sense maybe right. that's not their con you know they're concerned about justice and not the jail but that's that's why we have the problem we have we need we need judges who actually you know take the Constitution seriously in that way. Was it your impression John that that the federal panel did permit dart to release people with violent backgrounds if the, if they were on the recommend list i mean if 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 he gets a, he gets a list of this guy, this guy is on the list he's recommended he looks at it he sees that he's got 12 priors six of them violent he releases him what happens to dart does is dart don't yeah. judges have some kind of an immunity if they if they make a well, bad ultimately call? it's all it's all it's all politics right so that's where you pay your price you're not going to be sued you're not going to be you're not going to be civilly liable criminal liable I mean, my, my reading of the order is, again, DART was empowered to do this, but there was all kinds of discretion built into this, yeah. and discretion that we'd all want as, as citizens, as right. even as an advocate. I'm like, right. yeah, you, right. you want to look at these factors. Yeah. So that 1500 number is, you know, I, it's, I, don't, I don't know how, I don't see, there's not a formula you can apply and just you automatically know. There's a lot of discretion built into right. this stuff. Right. It's not an order. I mean, Evans in, on, the, on the TV show says yeah. it's an order. Sheriff DART has been ordered to release these people. He has mm -hmm. not been ordered. He has been given he's the been, latitude. He's to been do empowered. That. Empowered to, to do it, right. which, which again, I think is, is, is wrong. But, you right. know, the, the federal courts have been unable to settle this for almost 40 years mm -hmm. now. We've had this, right. we've had this right. problem coming in. And it's, and it's going to get worse. We've had that situation where we had 1,200 people, or, or sorry, 12,000 in the jail sleeping on the floors in the gym and so on. And we may see that again because the number of people on home monitoring is going down, 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 down as, as Dart number, feels like he right, can't. Right. Just to back this up, and the prison we, system has been extremely overcrowded. So we've got two systems that are at a, at a, at a, at a breaking point. And at that, we have to drop it. I'm really sorry. I wish we had more time to carry on. But Eric, thank you so much. Eric Zorn, Chicago Tribune. John Mackey from the uh, John Howard Association. A really interesting conversation, and it will continue on. You, it's all about you. You've been watching Chicago Newsroom. It's a community service of Can TV. You can find us here on cable any old time. And if you go to this address, the one that you see right down below, you can check us out at any time on iTunes or podcast, all sorts of other ways. Do that, and then come back here again next week for another show. I'm Ken Davis. Thanks for watching us here on Chicago Newsroom.